The Book of Recollections, Episode 24, No Way Out, by Dysylvania. Isn't it a drag when you are invited to dinner just to find out you're the main course? Well, let's see if our adventures make it until dessert or if we'll find only leftovers. A perplexed Keith was standing in front of what looked like a shadowy version of herself, looking traumatized and uttering what she had been feeling for the past month. Loneliness, no sense of purpose, disconnection. Keith tried to approach it, talk to it in the hopes of soothing it, but the creature's words were making much more of an impact than she'd originally hoped, instilling a sense of fear and uneasiness. Kate tried to brush off these not-so-familiar feelings, reminiscing her first date with Blaze and how flustered he was when they've met, which led him to set the flowers he got Kate on fire. The creature seemed to react in a positive manner for a moment, but Kate was abruptly filled by even darker thoughts of insecurity, abandonment, and seclusion. Back to the Great Hall, the rest of the party didn't take lightly to being turned into a feast, fighting back without pulling any punches. Lysander was masterfully dueling Count Maverick while continuously asking Jan to marry him which she begrudgingly refused while breaking one of the Baron's kneecaps. The Baron retaliated, trying to blind Jen with his intense gaze and being successful. Terrified, Jen did not anticipate the attack from Maverick, who forcefully plunged at her with his rapier. With Leo to bolden the adventures with his calming music, Lysander threw even more hits at Maverick, but the Count was swift on his feet and parried both strikes. The Bard felt something shuffling in his backpack. He unleashed darkness into the ballroom, who regurgitated a long thick rope adorned with bells, entangling the Count in it. Seraphine also lunged at Jen, shoving her to the other corner of the room. Despite her frail and elegant appearance, the lady possessed an incredible strength which Jen could not oppose. But Seraphine whispered a riddle in her ear in which she declared her intentions of overthrowing the current leadership and her desire to form an alliance. Jen pushed her to the side and ordered the fighting to cease, moving towards her grandmother and claiming she knew where her loyalties lied. She asked Eleanor and Leo to move somewhere more private to discuss, to the bard's disgruntlement, who ignores Jen's requests and carries on his quarrel with the Count. Trembling, Jen revealed her feelings of admiration, friendship and trust to Leo, claiming he was the one she wanted to go through life with. She got down on one knee and anxiously asked Leo to marry her. But a flustered Leo only uttered that he did not yet have a ring, only to be reminded of the orb Jen gave him in their hiding spot. Rejoicing, Eleanor called Henry to witness the betrothal. Mr. Fang approached them, leaving behind a disgruntled Lysander who continued to fight the Baron and, despite his mockery, managed to skewer him with his rapier and turn him to smoke. Leo passed the orb to Jen, declaring himself shocked but letting no other feeling show. Visibly disappointed, Jen took the orb, got up and forcefully pushed her grandma into a nearby coffin. Eleanor was raging, trying to oppose, but Jen, hearing Leo actually accept her proposal, felt empowered and succeeding in shoving her into the coffin, using the sun seal globe to seal her inside. A translucent golden mirror-like force field appeared, blocking even the faintest sound to come out of the coffin. Eleanor tried to call for Henry 
to no avail, and Jen closed the coffin lid shut. But Mr. Fang, witnessing the betrayal, went berserk and attacked his granddaughter, only to be tackled by Leo. Jen came to his aid, trying to grapple Mr. Fang, but he clawed into her flesh and temporarily blinded them both. Jen blindly bit her grandpa, who retaliated in the same fashion, but he was too distraught by the treachery and the confinement of his beloved. Lady Seraphine joined the tackle, placing one freezing cold hand on Mr. Fang's shoulder. Ice started creeping all over Henry's body, rendering him unmovable, but without actually killing him. Lady Seraphine urged the party to flee. Jen, after declaring her wish to find her father, heeded the lady's words and swiftly moved towards the corridor, followed by Leo and by a victorious Lysander, who managed to also take down the Count in a vicious duel. But the corridors were treacherous and began interchanging, leading them back to the Great Hall. After pleading Lunai for help to no avail, Leo focused his thoughts on finding Kaith and found himself in the same trophy room with the basin and a terrified Kaith in the middle. Leo recognized her doppelganger as being an obscurite shadow feeding on the target's fear. He knew the only way of getting rid of one was through laughter, so he began telling jokes to Kaith who soon chimed in, laughing more and more forcefully and slowly dimming the shadow. They then proceeded to find a source of water for the basin, without any luck, resorting to uttering a prayer to Lunai, only to be told by the astral that which they already knew. They had to fill the basin with water. Meanwhile, Jen focused all her willpower to find her father and lunged back into the ever-changing corridors, only to find herself in a small dark room filled with whispers, and she started hallucinating a kaleidoscope of eyes, mouths, and doors covering the chamber. Then the vivid hallucinations made their way into her mind. First she heard somebody crying out, help, help grandfather, help. Then. She saw two boys with matching hazel eyes, followed by eerie sounds, calling out, Vim, Vim, Vim. Another door opened. She saw the same two boys, one in a pool of blood lying on the ground. She tried to grab him, but the boy turned out to be just a head attached to a still pumping heart. She heard a voice saying, Forsake my soul for he has taken it. Another door opened, but she was still back in the same room. An old man with the same sad hazel eyes as the boy swallowed her whole, engulfing her in a pain that could rip her to shreds. Another door manifested, and that time she felt a scent of blood and rust lingering. She found herself in an old torture chamber. At the same time, Lysander and Seraphine scrambled into the corridor only to enter probably the most mouth-watering room in the castle, the kitchen. Despite the urge to give into the enticing feast in front of him, Lysander pushed through, opening the door on the other side, going headfirst into a maze webbed with a multitude of doors. They were faced with an impossible choice, but hearing an eerie crackle down the corridor expedited their decision, barging through the door in the middle. They reached the same trophy room with the basin where Kate and Leo were, but seeing that Jen was missing, Lysander immediately went in search for her. Back in the torture chamber, Jen quickly sniffed the air for the familiar scent of her father sensing nothing that could have drawn her attention. Seeing the door on the other side of the room, she almost instinctively avoided all the puddles of blood on the ground, pushed open the door which opened a secret wall behind a tapestry that led her to what looked like a chapel 
with signs of the blood moon all around it. She noticed the lake above, where its boundaries blended with the castle and started seeing more and more symbols of the crescent moon and wolves carved all around the place. As bats and ravens swarmed the edifice, she saw six coffins and six alcoves placed on the sides of the chapel, and then hearing a terrifying snarl coming from behind her. A wild creature with red hair resembling Jen's was chained to the wall. Jen recognized her father and tried to soothe him through her words, but to no avail. With Lysander coming to her assistance, they managed to shove Jen's tapestry underneath her father to trap him there dodging his every feral attack. After an unsuccessful communion with Lunai from Jen's part, and a less than satisfactory answer about the mark of Solis on Lysander's armor, they decided to leave the chapel and join the others. They both reached for the handle at the same time, their hands touching while they opened the door, only to be left in awe by what they saw on the other side of it. This was the recap for episode 24 of Vim, as told by the Book of Recollections. I am Count Bear, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim The Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on youtube.com slash at Dysylvania. New recaps drop every Friday evening. And remember, every subscribe keeps the magic alive. Thanks for sticking with us. Good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite!